Hello friends, I am Larry Hutton, your host of Limitless Life, and we are going to get into some good stuff today that's gonna to help you have a fun life, fulfilled life, blessed life. God wants you living a good life. He wants you having fun in life. Christians, I mean, I'm talking to people that have accepted Jesus, not religion. We're not talking religion. We're talking relationship with a living, risen Savior and Lord. If you are following Jesus and letting Jesus live through you and you are living through Jesus, I'm telling you what, you can be happy. Christians ought to be the happiest folk on the planet. I'm telling you, we ought to be happy, full of peace and full of joy all the time. Why? Because once you get born again, uh, the fruit the Holy Ghost brings fruit with him when he moves inside you to dwell in you. And the fruit of love is there. The fruit of joy is there. The fruit of peace, joy and peace make you feel good, make you happy, man. I mean, so you're fulfilled and you can just love life. I'm loving life, friends. This isn't a put on, man. I'm, I'm flat loving my life because God and his life is living through me. And it's, and, and when you're loving life, you know what that means? You're loving others. You're loving people. You're not thinking about self all the time. Sure. I understand we have to take care of self and do things with self, but I'm telling you what, when your life and your purpose in life is about others, then you'll be fulfilled then you'll be happy then because you're because that's what it's all about. God so loved the world that he gave. Wow. And you and I can do the same thing uh, is love the world because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts. Have been, we are wall to wall love beings. Uh, when we were created after God, God is love. And when you were born of God, you were born of love. So you're a love being. You're a chip off the old block, so to speak. <laughs> And uh, that's good news, friends, because now you can love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Yeah, we, we get to do all of those things just because we are born of love and our Father God is a love being. So we're love beings. We can love God uh, and love people. And that's important. All right, so we're going to get back into the series we've been doing. Those of you that have been watching, you know we've been doing a series. If you haven't been watching, we're doing a series on God wants you healthy. He wants you healthy in your body, and that's good news to a sick person. If you are sick, if you are diseased, if you are in pain, stay tuned in. And I encourage you, because we're in our eighth week here, if, if you haven't caught the other seven weeks of this subject. I'm telling you, when you start, when you hear what you hear today, you're going to want to go back and listen to the, all the others because it, it, what God's word does is it cleanses us. It washes us of unbelief. It washes us of false believing, false doctrine. Uh, it cleanses us. It washes our minds so that we think right. Our thinking and believing can hinder our healing. If you want to be healed and you think God wants you sick for some reason, and you've even heard that, that preach, then that's going to stop you from being healed. But if you'll go back and listen to all the teaching we've done already, we have shown you what God's word says, not what man says, not what some preacher says or what some Christian author says or this, or, or this person experience what their experience says. No, we've been going through the Bible and showing you dozens and dozens and dozens of scriptures that prove emphatically without beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is God's will to heal all and God wants you healed and there's a way for you to get healed. So we're going to get back into this. Romans chapter 10, verse number 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We found out the word saved also means healed. You don't have to believe me. Just look up the Greek word sozo and you'll find out it means healed just as much as saved. Besides that, you call on the name of the Lord. One of his names is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. The Lord, your physician. So if you call on that name, you're going to get healed, saved from sickness. If you call on uh, Jehovah Shalom, your peace, you're going to get saved from depression and fear and anxiety attacks and things like that. So whatever name you call on him as provider, Jehovah Jireh, the one that sees after you, takes care of you, provides for you. If you call on that name, you'll be saved from financial problems. So whatever name you call on him, you can be saved in that area. But verse 14, how can they call on him in whom they've not believed? How can they believe in him of whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So notice again, 
Verse 17 says faith comes by hearing, but uh, verse 14 lets us know a preacher's got to preach it for us to hear it. And then even after we hear it, we still have to believe. You still have to use the faith that God gave you. From that word even, when you, you may have had faith, God gives every man faith to be saved and that faith will do anything else. But then that faith is added to whenever you hear the word of God on another subject. You may, not have, you may be saved but not know it was God's will to heal you. Once you heard this teaching that God wants you healed, then faith came. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith came and then you were able to use that faith with your faith that God's given you, that the faith that came from that specific word, and you were able to use that and partake of that part of your salvation. Salvation is a complete, uh, uh, complete salvation in that it provides every area of your life freedom for, for those areas. So, so salvation includes freedom from sin, freedom from sickness, freedom from poverty, freedom from fear, panic attacks, freedom from depression, freedom from bad temper, anger problems. No matter what area in your life you're talking about, salvation, the, the whole package of salvation includes all of that. So you can be saved in one area, but not saved in another area if you don't know part of your benefits, part of your package. <laughs> It's, it's in your package. Remember, we looked at the benefits. He daily loads us with benefits. Remember Psalm 68? And then we looked at Psalm 103. And uh, please, if you haven't caught the previous programs, go back and watch the archives because they're life-changing stuff, man. This is, this is what I live by. This is why I walk in health. This is when sickness and disease comes against my body, I don't let it stay. I understand I'll get attacked. Because Jesus said in the world, you'll have tribulation. We're going to get attacked, friends, but we don't have to allow that sickness and that disease to remain when we do get attacked. Amen. So whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved from whatever area you're calling. But verse 14, you can't call on him if you don't believe. So you got to believe, friends. And you can't believe, verse 14, you can't believe if you don't hear. So even after you hear, doesn't mean you're going to believe. After you hear, you have to make a choice to believe. Once you make a choice to believe, then you have to make a choice to act. Okay, I believe that, but if you never do anything with that belief, it won't do anything for you. You got to mix faith with the Word of God, and so you got to release faith. Um, Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, um, the spirit of faith is when we believe God's Word and speak God's Word. And, and we saw in Romans 10, 8, when we were looking back there, if you back up to verse 8, you'll see that righteousness speaks. People that are right with God, they speak. Righteousness has a voice. And so when you become right with God, the word is nigh you even in your mouth and in your heart. That's the word of faith. That's the rhema of faith. That's the spoken word. You've got to get the word out of your heart and into circulation in order for things to happen. Uh, it's it's a, my words are spirit. Jesus said my words are spirit. So the, the word, when you speak it out, it attaches you to the spirit realm or we could say the unseen realm, the realm where God's power, God's anointing, God's glory, God himself, Jesus are where you can't see him with your natural eyes. Your faith attaches to that realm and then pulls power from that realm into this realm. And uh, since you and I are spirit beings, then we need spirit food. That's why we make it daily bread. So faith comes by hearing, 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 hearing. We keep hearing the word of God. The word of God releases life. But once we hear it, we got to believe it. Verse 14 backwards. Once we believe it, then we can call. Once we call, then we'll get. Uh, now, we were in Hebrews 13, 8. We're going to pick back up here in Hebrews 13, 8. We've been discussing Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We already looked at Matthew 4, 23. We already looked at Matthew 9, 35. We already looked at Matthew 11, 1 through 5. We already looked at Luke 5, 15. We already looked at Luke 6, 17. All of those verses of Scripture, every one of them showed us that Jesus did three things. The three things He did everywhere He went. I'm looking at one of the verses now. We'll probably go, in fact, we'll just go back to Luke 6, 17. But Matthew 4, 23, Matthew 9, 35, and Luke, or Matthew 11, 1 through 5, and then Luke 5, 15. All of them showed us Jesus went about doing three things. Those, that, those of you that have been watching, help me out now. What did he do? He went about teaching, preaching, and healing. Say it again. Teaching, preaching, and healing. If you haven't been with us before, go ahead and say that with us. Say teaching, say preaching, say healing. 
This is what Jesus did every city, every village, everywhere he went. In his three and a half years of public ministry, this is what he did. He only said what he heard his father say. He only did what he saw his father do. So he was establishing by his teaching and preaching the will of God in people's ears and in their hearts and in their minds. And then by healing, he was establishing God's will to heal all because he never, not one case ever told a sick person, it's not God's will to heal you. So he's not going to tell you that today. He's the same. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yesterday referring to when he physically walked the earth. He's the same right now as he was then. So what did he do then? Did he tell a sick person, it's not God's time, it's just not time for you? Nope, he never told a sick person that. Did he tell a sick person, well, you know, you've, you've just messed up so many times, you just don't deserve it. Nope, never told a sick person that. Did he tell a sick person, well, God's allowed this into you, in your life because uh, it's actually a blessing in disguise. Nope, not one person. So all of those statements that I just made are not scriptural. I don't care if they're coming out of a preacher's mouth. I don't care if they're coming out of a Christian uh, book that was authored by a, a wonderful Christian person. I don't care if they're coming out of the mouth of a wonderful Christian that's trying to give their testimony that God didn't heal them when they prayed, if it be thy will. I don't care what, whoever sang those things, Jesus did not say them, which means God does not say them. Jesus only said what he heard God say. God's the same. Jesus is the same. So, if Jesus didn't make somebody sick or keep somebody sick or tell somebody you're going to have to stay sick for a while or, or I'm going to let you stay sick because God has a purpose in it or this is a blessing in disguise. If he didn't say those things, you're not going to hear him out of Jesus's mouth today. You're not going to hear him out of God's mouth today, which means you're not going to hear them out of God's word today, which tells me this. If somebody is preaching something out of God's word and making it say those things, they're not scriptural. Wow, there's some revelation right there. So if me or any other preacher is preaching that, you know, it's not God's will to heal you, it's not God's will to heal all, uh, God wants this to be a blessing in disguise, whatever. If, we're, if I'm saying those things or if another preacher is saying those things, we are not preaching what Jesus pr preached. We are not teaching what Jesus taught. We are not saying what God's word says. Selah. Man, I'm not coming against me or any other preacher. I'm just saying whether me or any other preacher, if we preach that, then don't follow us. The Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. How do you know if somebody's following Christ or not? You got to get into the word. Jesus and the word are one. So if somebody's following Jesus, they're going to be following everything he said. And that means you're going to be following everything he did not say. So if he did not say those other things, I'm not going to say those other things. And if I'm saying those other things, I'm not following Jesus. And I don't want you to follow me only if I'm following Jesus, which means I'm speaking what the word of God says. Hallelujah. So everywhere he went, he went teaching, preaching, and healing. Here in Luke 6, 17, this is the one we closed with last program. Jesus came down with the 12. He stood on a, out in a field in a, in a wilderness area with a crowd of learners and pupils that the Bible calls disciples. And then a whole bunch of uh, other people, multitude of people came from Judea and from Jerusalem and even from the northern coastal towns of Tyre and Sidon. And they came to hear and to be healed. What were the three things he did everywhere he went? Teaching, preaching, and healing. Teaching, preaching, healing. Teaching, preaching, healing. So what did they come to hear? They came to hear the teaching and the preaching. That's what they came to hear. And it says, and they came to be healed. So they came to hear and be healed. They came to hear and be healed. I was pointing out the end of last program. The hearing came first. They came to do what first? Hear and then to be healed. Why did they come to hear? Well, they've got to find out if it's God's will for them. Because since it says multitudes came and they came to hear and be healed, which means they were healed, multitudes were healed. And if it's not God's will to heal everybody, then the multitudes are going to have to hear first to find out whether they should hang around or not. <laughs> the, the, the multitudes came together to hear. 
So if it's not God's will to heal everybody, then then part of the crowd's got to hear the ones. OK, and now it's God's will to heal you. And the other part of the crowd's got to hear, well, it's not God's will to heal you. So you guys, you hang around. We're going to have a healing line for you. But the rest of you, you know, God, don't get mad at God now. God's got a purpose in this. You know, try. Don't lean to your own understanding. You know, some somehow God will turn this into a blessing. This is a blessing in disguise. You know, God, God has a higher purpose. No, 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 no. That's not what they heard. It said they all came and heard and they all came and were healed. In fact, let's go on to another verse. Luke chapter nine. Ooh. I'm preaching me happy. I hope I'm helping you today. Luke chapter nine, verse number 11. Luke nine eleven. 11, it says, when the multitudes knew it, they followed him and he received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. So watch what it says. He, he, when the multitudes knew it, this, the previous verse actually tells us that Jesus and his disciples had tried to get away from the crowd and, and have some alone time together. You can read about it. Uh, but evidently someone must have found out. It says the word spread and quickly everyone found out and, uh, that where, where Jesus and his disciples had gone. And then verse 11 says, when the multitudes Multitudes knew about it. They followed him. So it just, they just weren't going to get away this time. And, and so they followed him and it said, Jesus received them. And it says he spoke to them. He spoke to them about what? The kingdom of God. Now, all the other five verses that we looked at five, Matthew four, Matthew nine, Matthew 11, Luke five, Luke six. And now look, this is our sixth one. So all the other five passages of scripture we've looked at already shows, shows us Jesus did three things everywhere he went. What did he do? Teaching, preaching, and healing. Teaching, preaching, and healing. Teaching, preaching, and healing. So what were the first two things Jesus did? teaching and preaching. Look what this verse says. He received them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God, teaching and preaching. Here we go again. This is our sixth passage now where Jesus always taught and proclaimed, preached things before he healed. Teaching, preaching, healing. Teaching, preaching, healing. Everywhere he went, teaching, preaching, and healing. It says he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. So there's the teaching and preaching. And it says, and healed them. Healed them. Wow. So once again, this, this is the sixth time. It says he taught, he preached, and he healed. But now I want to point something else out here. I want you to see something else in this verse. Notice it says... He healed those who had need of healing. Hmm. He healed those who had need of healing. N notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say he healed those that it was God's will to heal. Notice it doesn't say he healed those that had enough faith. Man, if I could just get enough faith to be healed. No, no, that's not what it says. Notice it doesn't say he healed those that were good enough. No, it says he healed those that needed healing. Doesn't it? He healed those who had need of healing. He healed those that needed healing. Here is another foolproof scripture right here to prove it is God's will to heal everybody. It does not say he healed those that were good enough, that, that it was God's will to heal, that had enough faith. Uh, it, it, it didn't say he healed those that, you know, God wasn't trying to teach something with a sickness. He, he healed those except those that it wasn't God's time. It doesn't say that. It said those that had need of healing. Well, friends, if somebody's sick, if somebody's diseased, if somebody is in physical pain, they classify as need of healing. They fall into this class. Need healing. They need healing. Whether somebody wants it or not, they need it. I remember a preacher one time, he was ministering down uh, uh, in a healing line and, and this, guy, this person, oh gosh, it seemed like maybe they were even had some crippled stuff going on or something and they got healed. Uh, the preacher prayed for them and they got healed. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember this part. Uh, they got healed of this major disease, major illness in their body and they were raised up right there in front of multitude of people. 
and uh, and then the preacher noticed that they had something like they were wear, wearing a hearing aid or or something else that was small smaller compared to the big thing they'd just gotten healed of. And the preacher said, "Wait, well, wait a minute. I notice you have such and such wrong with you. Let me pray and get let let God heal that too." And the person said, "Oh no no no, I'm I'm okay with that." You, what? You're what? <laughs> that blew me away, so to speak. It was like, whoa, wait a minute. God just healed you of a major thing in your body and you got this little minor thing going on in your body and you don't want to let him heal. You're, you can put up. Why do you want to put up with, especially if you've joined us all the previous weeks and we found out Satan is the author of all sickness and disease. He is the instant. He's the one behind it all. We even found out they're called spirit of infirmity. Spirits are, are, are very often involved in bringing sickness and disease on people's bodies and people's lives. Why do you want to put up with something that God didn't put in your body or God didn't put in your life? Satan is, man. You're supposed to resist Satan and submit to God and resist the devil and then the devil will have to flee from you. But when the preacher said that, wait a minute, let, let me pray for you. For the, oh, no, I can, I can put up with that. I've actually seen people uh, act like that through the years when, when I'm getting ready to pray for them for something. And they, and they stopped me because they were getting benefits from the government for that problem in their body. I'm getting ready to let God heal them. And they're thinking, well, if I get healed of this, I won't be able to get money from the government anymore. And they actually did not want to be healed of that thing. Friends, that's making the government your idol. You have turned the government into your God. Jehovah government is my provider. No, 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 friends, don't do that. If you have done that, I don't, if you're watching this program right now, don't do that. God can provide so much more benefits than, than the, the Medicare, Medicaid, uh, unemployment, uh, you name it, Social Security. God can provide so much more than the government. God is bigger. In fact, the Bible tells us in Isaiah, the government is upon God's shoulders. And we're talking about a government of heaven, the, a government the Bible said will have no end. In other words, when all these other governments pass away, this government, God's government will be here forever. And God's government governed by God himself and governed by Jesus and governed by the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you what. This government will provide for you in supernatural ways that a natural government cannot provide. Don't make government your God. <clears throat> that is good preaching, Brother Larry. Thank you. I'll go ahead then. Praise God. <laughs> so Jesus healed those that had need of healing. So do you need healing? Well, yeah, Brother Larry, I need healing. I need healing of this. I need healing of this problem. I need healing of that problem. Yeah, yeah, I need healing. Well, this verse says, now remember, we already looked at Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, what? The same when today as when he walked the earth yesterday. Same today. Will he heal everyone who have need of healing? Listen, anybody that's sick falls under the class of need of healing. Anybody that's diseased falls under this class, need of healing. Anybody that's physically hurting in pain, whether it's bone, nerves, joint, chest, I'm, you, head, you name it, neck, back, what a, you name the pain, you're in need of healing. And if you're in need of healing, you qualify, which this, this is absolute proof. It's God's will to heal all. Since, he, since he's willing to heal all who need it, and every sick person needs it, even if they don't want it, like those people I was talking about. They may not have wanted healing, but they were sick. So guess what? They needed it whether they wanted it or not. They did need it. So if you need healing, it's God's will to heal you. Now, I'm going to be preaching a whole lot more on this subject the next week or two. We're going to keep going on this because it's going to keep building your faith. It's going to keep washing, renewing your mind and washing you clean and getting rid of any... Uh, unwavering and doubt and unbelief and, and you're going to get to the place where you can take hold of it. But if you're there now, take hold of it right now. Father God, right now I pray for those that are watching. They need healing. 
Now they're looking to you, Jesus. They're not looking to Larry Hutton, not looking to Larry Hutton's prayer. I'm just praying for them, Lord, to get them to believe you and release that faith and call on you right now. Because once they hear the preacher, then they can believe. Once they believe, they can call. And whoever calls on the name of Jesus as healer shall be healed. So right now, Lord, help them to call. If you're, if you're out there, just lift up. Lord Jesus, I just call on you as my healer. Just like I received you as Savior, I now receive you as healer. Thank you for healing my body from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. Thank you for healing. And then name whatever part it is. Thank you for healing healing my pancreas. Thank you for healing my esophagus. Thank you for healing my heart. Thank you for healing my stomach. Thank you for healing my bones. Thank you for healing my joints. Thank you for healing my nerves. Thank you for healing my whatever part it is that you're believing for. Thank you, Lord God. You are the Lord who heals me. In fact, you ought to order, if you have not ordered our confession cards, you ought to order those. I'm telling you what, there's 52 of them. You can t just take one and spend a whole week on one verse of scripture. If you do just one scripture a whole week, hundreds of times during that week, you'll know that verse and that verse will set you free. And after one year of just one verse a week, in one year, you'll have 52 verses of scripture that you can do battle with. 52, that's more more than most Christians know. Do it two years, you'll have 104 verses. That's more than most preachers know. <laughs> wow. Well, we're out of time, friends. This is good stuff, isn't it? I'm just telling you what the Word says, and it's, and it's helping people and setting them free. Hey, I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank you for supporting the program. I know some of our partners, monthly partners, you're helping us big time so we can stay on the air and keep reaching more people. And if you're not a partner, please pray and consider about being one, would you? Sure love you. God bless you, man. We'll see you on the next program. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. With your own words, you can release the power of life that will bring health to your body. God's healing grace is released through faith, and faith is released through what you say. Your healing is in your mouth. God wants you to be whole, well, and healthy. But if you have not heard his word on it, how can you have faith to call on him as your healer? These 52 Declare It cards have a healing scripture from God's word on one side and a corresponding declaration of faith, which you can speak about yourself on the other. Hearing God's word concerning your healing will build your faith to walk through life in complete confidence that every sickness or disease that ever attacks you must depart. To order your prescription for health declare it cards, go to larryhutton.org or call us at 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.